Wrong button. <laughs> hey, how's it going, everybody? Welcome to Ark Survival Ascended. Today, we're going to be talking about Scorched Earth, the new res uh, expansion that just released on to Ark Survival Ascended. Now, how would you get started? Well, we're going to jump into single player, and I'm going to guide you through the process. It's actually pretty easy, but it is really, really hard. If you're playing uh, for the very first time, I would recommend that you play on the island. It's much easier and safer um, area to get started. But if you really like punishment, let's jump into Scorched Earth because it can get rather intense and very chaotic at times, but it is extremely rewarding. So to start off, let's go to here. We're going to go to single player. Uh, you will notice if you have Scorched Earth installed that you have it right here. There is the island up above it. And then also all your other modded arcs will be up here. Uh, you click uh, go into single player with Scorched Earth started and it will take you to this screen. Right here where we can create our character. Now, if you already have um, a survival that uh, is ready, then you can do that. Uh, let's see. Let's load a preset. I've got one right here. Um, matter of fact, if you're doing this, I would recommend you go through, you customize your character however you want it, and then you click save, and then that'll allow you to reload your preset however you want to right there. It's actually pretty cool. All right, so let's go through. Let's create our character. Now, there are different varying spawn spots where you can spawn. Now, there are a few ones that are a lot more difficult than others. Now, uh, much like the Ark Survival Ascended or Ark Survival Evolved that came before this, um, where it says that th there are easy and medium and hard spawn spots these are really just different levels of hard because you never know what can be spawned in um, things uh, you can drop down and a raptor will just eat you the moment you spawn and it happens that is scorched earth key thing is brush yourself off respawn try again until you get to a spot where you don't have that constantly happening all right so uh let's pop in let's go to i mean we could go midlands uh west right there we go this one right here as well. I actually prefer this one right here, but also uh, this one right here is actually pretty good. South 3 and Midlands South is actually really good. Both of these are good. Now, all of these will get you into a pretty decent spot. This one way up here will put you close to the Blue Obelisk, which is actually a decent one, even though it says it is like the hardest one ever, you know? It's got this red little thing on there. That's just an intimidation tactic. Don't believe that little guy, all right? Okay, so now that that's gun, uh, done, let's uh, pop down here and let's just spawn. This desert wasteland. Skip through that. You can enjoy that if you want. I've already seen that many, 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 many times. But yeah, for your very first time, I recommend you go through and you do that. All right, so here are the starting screen when you start. And let's get talking about a few different things. Because I'm going to treat this uh, beginner's guide like you are just jumping into ARC for the very first time. Because everybody's excited about Scorched Earth. Well, the first thing you're going to want to do is run to a spot where you're not going to die. Goal one achieved. All right, so now we can actually kind of take a look at the area around us, and you will see over there, there's some stuff that's fighting a raptor. Um, it's two Morellatops against a raptor. The raptor's probably dead. We could actually get some, go get some fresh meat over there if we harvested up the raptor's corpse, but you have to wait until the raptor dies. If you jump down too quick, and also there's a raptor right down below us, which means that that's going to give us a little bit of problems. And also, if you're sitting like this, I would recommend if you can actually take a breather, do so. So where you can just see how the area moves. Wherever you see movement, that is generally either something that's going to help you or hinder you. And by hinder you, I mean eat you. And it's not even going to use ketchup. I mean, literally, you're, you're like your own self ketchuping meal to these creatures. It That's just the way it is. You sauce yourself while they're eating you. And this Carno down below may actually aggro on us and then come up here. So I'm going to try to get up a little bit higher and then get stuck and fall down. Okay, so that happened just now. You all saw that. All right, so uh, let's pop in here. All right, so now we have uh, stats. Health, uh, this right here, and by the way, fall damage is definitely a thing. That's why I have uh, um, oh, less health right now. All right, this right here is your amount of hit points that you can withstand. Stamina is the amount of, uh, is it's, it's a, a, a skill point or a stat point that determines how much you can do any activity. Sprinting does it. Uh, harvesting things with a, a, a pick. Um, anything like that uses up your stamina ability. Oxygen. This is how much, how long you can hold your breath underwater. 
food. This is how much food you can, um, how much food you have. There. There's stuff. All right, we'll just pretend we don't hear it. It'll probably come eat us, but it's fine. All right, and this is your food stat. Whenever this reaches zero, you start taking damage because you need to um, oh, eat some food. If you eat food, this will go up depending on what all you eat and all the way up to 100 where it'll stop. I would recommend don't leveling that up ever. Same thing with water. This is the exact same thing as food, only with water. Water is a very, very important stat on Scorched Earth because it's a desert. It's dry. It's desolate. You will be going through water. Whenever you sprint, your water and your food are going to be going down. Your water faster, which means that chances are you're going to be dying really quick if you sprint everywhere in the early game. Wait, this right here is a very important stat. This right here determines how much you can carry. I would recommend boosting this one pretty quick. Not as quick as a few others, though. Melee damage. This is whenever you are hitting something with a physical object, um, it determines how much damage you do. At 100%, you do exactly the baseline damage. Um, anything over, then you will actually start building up a multiplier over time. Crafting skill. This right here determines um, how well, when you craft blueprints or um, custom recipes, not the regular Ingrams, but custom recipes like food and stuff like that, how good of an effect it has. And I'll um, those are for a video for a later time and not in this video. Just know that in the early game, you never need to uh, boost your crafting skill because it really does no good at in the early game. Once you get to the late game, it has huge benefits. But in early game, you're not going to be able to get any of these benefits. Fortitude. This right here is your ability to ability to withstand the elements. Also, your ability to withstand torpor. Because in this um, game, there are two different types of damage. There is physical damage and there is torpor damage. Torpor damage, when you reach maximum amount of torpidity, you will fall unconscious and things will be able to have their way with you. That is also how you tame creatures in this. Generally, sometimes there's ways that you can actually feed it by sticking berries up its butt and doing things things like that. But for the most part, you're knocking something out with its torpidity meter. Once it reaches zero, it will fall, or once it reaches 100%, it'll fall asleep, and then you'll be able to feed it and then nurse it back to health that way. That is what the torpidity meter does. But when a dinosaur, such as like a scorpion, uses a torpidity attack on you, your uh, torpidity will raise up, and when you fall asleep, it won't actually try to uh, feed you and nurse you back to health to, um, Oh, to tame you, it's just going to eat you and bring in all its buddies to eat you because, like I said before, you are a self-saucing meal to the dinosaurs. It That's the way it is. That's your role in this ecosystem. Enjoy. All right. So uh, one of the first things I would recommend that you do is either fortitude or stamina. Stamina determines how far you could run and stuff like that. Fortitude determines how much you can withstand the elements. I'm actually going to go stamina first. We all worry about fortitude later. Now, when you level up, you will go to the Ingrams page. This right here, um, every time you level up, you'll get a certain amount of Ingram points available. Now, you can actually learn certain... Uh, well, as a matter of fact, most of the things that you craft are learned through here. Now, I would recommend that for the first starters, you go with the stone hatchet and maybe... Maybe um, at level three, well, save your points. At level three, you want to go for cloth stuff because this stuff right here will actually help you against the elements a little bit. Um, when you get later on into the game, you'll get something called desert cloth armor, and that's what you'll be wearing for the majority of your time. And desert cloth armor, you get at level 28. So this right here, this is the stuff that you want to be shooting for. Once you reach this stuff, you want to be getting the best quality stuff that you come in, which is where the blueprints and then later on, the crafting skill will come in. But that's a video for another time. All right, so now that we've got this, now what we're going to be wanting to do is we're going to be wanting to find water. Now, good thing about this uh, Scorched Earth is the water is very clearly defined on the map. So if you see the little bits going through here, then I would recommend that you try to go towards one of them. Now, this little ravine right here is really generally pretty safe, so I would recommend for a first-time player on Scorched Earth, go towards this area right down here because you will have the best um, best time actually getting started in the game. So that's where I'm actually going to be doing that so I can show you guys what it looks like. And then also you notice down in the very bottom right-hand screen where you see that it is super hot right now. That's what the big giant flame means. It means we're going to be taking damage from the heat of the weather that's going on. I'm slowly dying as I'm sitting here talking to you guys. So let's get moving. Let's get out of this super heat. We may actually die 
before we get there. Also, these plants, wherever you see plants, generally you can go up to them and you can hit your uh, gather button or your use button and you will gather up some berries. And I would recommend you do that, especially when it comes to like things like fiber and such like that, because that's where the plants, that's where the fiber comes from is these little plants. And also you will ga gather stones and sand off the ground as well. Sometimes you'll even grab things like uh, that have wood in them which is pretty cool. That's uh, another benefit. But also, if you need to gather thatch and wood easily, just go up to a tree and start punching it. But we're about to die anyway, so I don't think... Yep, yep, I, I think we're about dead. Let's see if we can get down here into the water and see if we can live. Yep, we are super dead. All right, now's the time where you uh, you wipe yourself off, you rinse and repeat, and you say, maybe we shouldn't have been sitting there talking the entire time while the superheat ha um, happened. But, you know, it is what it is. No sense beating myself up in it. I, uh, everything that was on my corpse, I can actually uh, recreate. So, yeah, later on in the game, when uh, you get a little bit more higher level, you'll have stuff that you want to eventually go back and get your corpse. But your last death will be marked by that death beacon right there, so you can easily find your corpse and your stuff. All right, let's see if we can get to a spot before we die this time. And this is not the way. Okay, that was a Microraptor. Yeah, we're probably gonna have to wait until this heat dies down. Yep. Let's actually try Midlands right there and then see if we can make it that way. Because the goal is we're trying to go for this area right there. All right, still super hot. All right, let's see if we can get our butt over there, picking up a little bit of berries along the way. And then also another way of getting uh, water on Scorched Earth is cactuses. If you punch it or harvest it, you will actually be raising up your water. Also, you will get cactus sap, which allows you to get a little bit of food and a little bit of water from it, which is very, very helpful. Now right, let's start getting a little bit more fortitude because this super heat is kind of kicking my butt. All right, and I just want to see if we can get over there before we die. I may actually... Oh, no, that's a, that's a raptor. All right, hey, self-saucing meal coming through, guys. All right. Yeah, get off me. Get off me. And we die. All right, I think I may have actually done it. All right, but also another thing for Scorched Earth are these jug bugs. You will see that on the, uh, some of them, they are uh, the orange ones. These ones are oil. If you uh, go up to it and you collect uh, um, the stuff from its butt, you will actually gain a little bit of oil. There are also blue ones that will give you a drink of water, which is very convenient and very helpful when you just need that last little drink of water. All right, uh, let's cut across here to the left. Um, I ended up spawning over here, and I think we should be able to make it this way. All right, but I have to be very, very careful about how I sprint because... Sometimes, as you're running here, watch this. The water just falls super, super fast. So that's a thing. And then there's bugs back there. They're going to be trying to come eat me. But yeah, the water just constantly falls. Let's see if we can go down this way. All right. Now, another thing is the Jerboas. Uh, they're the little guys that uh, you just heard up top. They're little fluffy dudes with uh, big ears and big, long uh, feet. Uh, you can actually tame those guys by punching them in the head and throwing a little bit of berries on them very, very quickly. Great. And now I'm completely out of water. All right, let's get a little bit of cactus. All right, this will gain my water. All right, see how this is going up as I'm harvesting it? Yeah, it is doing a little bit of damage to me, but we're getting thatch and we're hydrating super, super effective. It's really good. Now, Jaboa is what I was saying about before, is once you tame one of those guys, you can pick it up and you can carry it around on your shoulder. And depending on what call they uh, give, will let you know which weather effect is about to happen. They are very, very helpful when it comes to uh, Scorched Earth, especially when you're out doing a bunch of things and you're getting invested in what you're doing and uh if you know say like you're out hunting for death worms or something like that and then they'll let you know if hey there's a sandstorm about to hit so they'll let you know hey wait until the sandstorm's done before you go fight that death worm it is really really important all right let's also gather some of this stuff Yep, 
Now this fiber is going to be very, very important for helping us out. All right, now here, uh, let's go a little bit more fortitude. And then for here, we're going to learn the shirt, the pants, and the hat. Now, I could learn the gloves. and matter of fact, I probably should be learning the gloves. But they also take hide, which means that comes from uh, creatures that you have to kill and harvest, like the little jerboa or the raptor earlier. Those guys as well. But here, now we take this. We go, uh, we craft that, that, and that. And then also, since we have enough stuff, we craft the pick. Now, the next thing we're going to be wanting to get is the stone hatchet and then maybe some spears. It is very, very important. All right, let's equip that. Now, you'll notice that as I'm equipping this here, look at this. My cold resist and my heat resist, they're changing as I equip this armor, which means it makes it better. We are actually going to be able to withstand the heat a little bit better. It is very cool. Also, you can go through and on the emote wheel, by holding on the emote wheel, uh, you can actually disable your helmet if you don't want to from there. Also, you can do a whole bunch of really cool emotes, and then you can set whichever one up goes for. Um, whenever you press that button, then what, which one it does. It's a really cool system they've got going on in here. All right, so now uh, there's a whole bunch of water down below us, but it is a little bit harder to uh, get to. But there's also this little lip, and that little lip is very, very important because certain things will fall over there, but what we're going to, we're going right over by that way. There's a little land bridge that we're going to be trying to get under and then seeing if we can actually get through. All right, let's har use the um, pick to harvest up this tree really quick now also another thing i would i um, like to inform you guys about is or this is very very helpful is pick and hatchet will get you different resources if you're going to take this pick and harvest this up you'll end up getting more thatch than you would cactus sap but if you were to use a hatchet on it you would get more cactus sap than you would thatch same thing goes for trees you get more thatch than you would wood uh, yeah, wood, wood. Yeah, I get it. Um, but also, um, uh, if you were to harvest a rock with a pick, you would get more flint than you would stone. But if you used a hatchet on it, you would get more stone than you would flint. Also, stone is one, or, uh, rocks are one of the best sources of actually getting sand in this game, just harvesting it up. Usually with a hatchet, you get the most amount of, uh, you get the most amount of sand with a hatchet. All right, also, um, once in a while, these things will spawn little crocodiles. They're kind of rare in ASA. In ASE, they were really common, but in ASA, they're a little bit rare. But just be in, keep in mind that once in a while, you will see a little flying croc that will jump at you. And what I mean by that is a flying crocodile. All right, let's jump across here. And yes, they are as evil as they sound because they grab a hold of you and then they drag you and then they kill you. It's great. I'm just trying to find a rock that actually knows it's a rock. That should be some down here. Let's jump through here. Let's get over to this edge. And also notice that while I'm in this ravine, we don't have to deal with the super heat that's all around us because this down, this way down here is insulated from a lot of the uh, super heat. It does get very cold in here at night, so you need to make sure that you work your way towards getting a couple campfires. Here's a jerboa right here. Let me show you exactly how this is done. Just punch it. And punching actually does torpidity. Where'd you go? There you go. Now you're unconscious. And with these, we'll give them some berries. Now, um, when it comes to taming up things like this, if it's an herbivore, there the berry you want to go for are these little purple berries, the measure berries. But since I don't have a lot of them, I'm just going to throw all these on there. And then also, uh, the different berries, the colored berries, these are generally used for dyes and stuff like that, also for certain recipes. But the purple ones, those are the ones that the um, herbivores love. 
Now, the black ones, these actually build torpor. See how his torpor is now going up that I fed them? Each blackberry is worth 7.5 torpor in order to keep them asleep. But if we wanted him to wake up early, the white berries actually reduce torpor. So, yeah, use them accordingly to however you feel that you need to. Generally, you don't need these uh, white berries unless if something hits you for a torpor attack. All right, now that this guy's tamed, we can actually take him, put him up on our shoulder like this, and then now he will notify us if uh, the weather is about to change. He'll start chirping and calling and doing all sorts of cool stuff. It's really cute. All right, let's see if we can get over here. Now that I jumped off to get this guy, we can actually swim across here. And also... Um, getting water, you can just walk up to the water and then you can uh, click your use button on the water and you'll take a drink. Or you can submerge yourself. There, I just... Here, like this. Hold on. Stop picking up rocks! Okay, well, the, I'm also drinking while I'm picking up rocks, just so you know that. All right, but um, also you can submerge yourself in the water and you'll fill up your water that way as well. All right, so now that you get to a nice and safe... There he goes. He's chirping. Chirp again for me, dude. All right. Yeah, right like that. And he's he's got uh, one of four different call signs that each one is de it will determine what the um, effect is. All right, so now we're going to harvest this up. And we're going to get a hatchet and probably a couple spears but what we really want to get to is some some campfires because campfires because the desert if anybody's ever been in desert is warm during the daytime and freezing cold at nighttime so we need to get some campfires to actually help us get to help us survive through the night one i would recommend probably two campfires maybe even three because they do stack their benefits are actually pretty dang cool right, let's go here put that down there here put that down there a little bit more in fortitude and that's our goal for the very first day is we need to be able to survive the dinos and then we also need to be able to get enough resources and then we also need to survive our first night right and also this sand it weighs a lot. You don't need this stuff right away. So I would recommend just throwing the sand out when I'm earlier in the game. Eventually, you will need that in order to make adobe and stuff like that. All right, so now for here, let's take these, and we'll just put these up here in the area that we claim as ours, which is generally a rather safe area. I would recommend going with something like this, or maybe even right over here, so where you have a little bit of a buffer down below, or way up here. You can actually make little pipes that uh, bring you up, that bring water up to you, but instead, I'm just going to put it right down here. And there we go. Now we've got two of these. What these things use for fuel is the wood we've been gathering as well. So we just take that and we put that on there. I'm actually going to go get a little bit more, and we'll put it on there. And then this will be good to help us get through the night. I want to make sure I have about at least 100 wood on each one for the very first night because it gets really, really cold. And once we have this going, then we will also then we will also be able to make a few other things while we're doing this. All right, and I'm encumbered because I'm carrying too much wood right now, but it is really important. And another thing you want to be uh, gather going towards very, very early on is you want to be going towards making some bolas. Bolas will actually stop things from actually coming at you. Bolas, these right here, you unlock them at level 9. They're really easy to craft, but they do take hide. So I would recommend getting some of that. So where if, say, like a raptor is coming at you, you can bola it and either run away or kill it because it'll be locked in place for 60 seconds, which is really, really cool. Uh, let me see. Need to go get... Enough stuff to craft a couple more spears. Now, this is also another thing, is spears generally tend to break, which is very, very unfortunate. Especially when you're in the biz in the uh, when you're in, you know, in the act of actually trying to use the spear to defend yourself. Um, spears generally break quite often like that. So yeah. 
All right, now here is an easy way of getting hide, is either you find a little Jerboa like over there, or you find something like a level five Parasaur, and you just start stabbing it. Now it'll run from you. Oh, why are you not running? Oh, now he's decided that he wants to. All right, where are you? Oh, there you are, come here. See, there you go. And now he's dead. All right, now if we were to harvest this guy up, if we were to use a pick, we'd get more meat than we would, uh, oh, hide. But if we use a hatchet, we use more hide than we would wood. So yeah, I mean, we'd, we'd get more um, hide than we would meat. And since I need more hide right now, I'm just going to uh, get the hide from him and then use whatever meat I get so I can cook it in the campfire to help me get through the day. All right, so now we're going to take this going to get the one that has the most in it we're going to throw this on there and we're going to light the fire now this will slowly cook our food for us and then help us out a little bit also remember the cactus that we gained from earlier it will give us a little bit of food it's not a lot it's one point per one you eat but it will also give you water as well but since I kind of want to use this as my spare backup for emergencies I'm actually just going to take a drink from the water down here, and then I'm gonna wait for my meat to cook. All right, first one's cooked, put it right down there, and then I can actually just use that button uh, to go ahead and eat that. All right, so now also this is this is a, sand, um, a sandbox game, and bases are generally a thing that is, I mean, honestly, it's encouraged. Build something. Bases will keep you safe while you're on the inside of it. It is very, very important. But also things like sleeping bags and beds, these allow you to respawn, which are very, very important in order to be able to pick where you can respawn. Very cool. Another thing that you want to be able to craft is a mortar and pestle. Very early on, they go on to a foundation, which I'm going to learn that. I'm going to learn that. And then narcotics. These are extremely important. These things work like those little black berries I was telling earlier, but in a more condensed form. Uh, since these are five, they are actually five times the um, worth how much a regular narco berry. Narco berry is worth 7.5. These are worth 35. And then also spark powder. This is another very important thing that uh, it takes two flint and one stone and it will craft two spark powder. These will actually cook things for you. You can put them on campfires. You could also put them inside forges to harvest your metal. That way there, you can uh, you don't get any residue from that, which is kind of cool. Because when you're um, cooking things with wood, here, let me show you, it will burn into charcoal. See right there, we've got some charcoal. But also, charcoal, every last little bit of this that you get early in the game, I would recommend you save because you're going to need that for gunpowder later on so you can actually make firearms. It's very, very important. So, yeah. And then now uh, that we've got that, let's uh, put another point in there. Go over like this. We go to crafting. Uh, create a foundation. And then here, this will actually be just a spot. Now, remember, just because we're starting here doesn't mean you need to actually live in this spot. This right here is just a rather... It, it's a good spot for us to get started. All right Now, the foundation, this right here... Uh, will allow us to put down a mortar and pestle, a refining forge, where we can get metal and harvest it. And it's very important. Now, from here, I would recommend just enjoy the game. Have fun. You will be a little bit stressed at times, but once you find your groove, it'll everything will just kind of click into place, and you'll begin to have just a ton of fun. All right, but there's a few different things I want you to know. All right, so silk. Whenever you're on here, um, silk. It comes from little purple flowers. There's none around here, but uh, up top of there, there is a whole bunch of them. They're little purple flowers. Um, if you either pick them up by hand or if you get a whip, uh, I would recommend you get a whip early on. Right now, I'm not high enough level to show you. Uh, it's right here, level 20. Uh, you can actually smack the whip across the ground. Uh, just whip it, and then you'll gather up all the bushes that you whip. It's really efficient and really effective. Um, I would recommend you harvest up the silk flowers with that. All right, so we've already covered cactus. Now, how do you get metal? Metal is generally from around the mesas. Not these two. Well, on the opposite side, we may actually... I just threw away my spear, didn't I? I just threw away my handy-dandy laser pointer. All right, oil bug. We're doing this without a laser pointer. 
All right, uh, around the mesas, uh, these two right here generally don't have a, a lot of metal around them, but the other ones behind them, let me show you on the map. Uh, see, the mesas we're looking at here are this one and this one. Uh, these ones don't normally have a lot of resources. This one has a lot of salt, which is also another ingredient you're going to need. But this one right here has a ton of metal, but be very careful when you go over there because it is super hot. Yeah, and it's a little gray rock that has a glint to it. You can't miss it. Um, it, it doesn't look like any of the other rocks. All right, but also, once you get a flyer, um, at level 36 is when you can tame your first flyer, and you can get a Lamantra. You can fly up to the very tops of these mesas up here, and you can get some crystal and some obsidian very, e very easily and very effectively. It's really cool. All right, so... That is the basics and the beginners, um, what you need to know to get started on Scorched Earth. I hope the video helps you out. I hope you enjoy it. If you want to know a bunch of further stuff, I have a constant, uh, constantly evolving uh, list of Let's Plays on my channel where I go through, I discuss a whole bunch of different things, and then also I guide people on how to get um, whatever they need and also how to generally play. I've been playing this game ever since it very first came out on Ark Survival Evolved, so I know quite a bit. I've got thousands of hours into the game, so hey yeah hit me up sometime uh and hey i hope the video helped you out if you haven't already make sure you hit that like button i really appreciate it if you're new around here subscribe and until next time this is flinger and take it easy everybody and i will see you guys on the channel